and thank you very much for joining us today for the Regional Transit Services Commission press conference and media availability. Um, we have several speakers about to present. Once our speakers are finished, there will be an opportunity for members of the media who've joined us to ask questions for the eight board members who will be with us for that portion of our proceedings. And, and with that, I would like to ask Councillor Wes Broadhead from St. Albert to begin. Well, good morning, everyone. My name is Wes Broadhead and I am the uh, Councillor for the City of St. Albert and the Regional Transit Services Commission Interim Board Chair. On behalf of myself and other board members who are honored to represent eight participating municipalities, thank you for joining us today as we celebrate a major milestone for the region. Before we get started, however, I'd like to first respectfully acknowledge that we are on Treaty 6 territory, traditional lands of First Nations and Métis people. As treaty people, Indigenous and non-Indigenous, we share the responsibility for stewardship of this beautiful land. I'd like to first recognize our distinguished guests in attendance today. First, the Honorable Rick McIver, Minister of Transportation and Interim Minister of Municipal Affairs is with us today to bring greetings on behalf of the province. I'd like to introduce to you as well, the interim board members, City of Edmonton Ward 10 Councillor, Michael Walters, City of Beaumont Councillor, Sam Monkoff Swain, City of Leduc Councillor, Glenn Finstad, City of Spruce Grove, Councillor Chantal McKenzie. City of Fort Saskatchewan, Councillor Gordon Harris. Town of Devon, Mayor Ralph, Mayor Ralph, Ray Ralph. Town of Stony Plain, Councillor Justin Laurie. Since 2018, the RTSC Interim Board has worked closely with their councils and administrations as well as the government of Alberta to form a regional transit commission. In December of 2020, the application to establish our commission as a legal entity was submitted by the eight participating municipalities consistent with the province red tape reduction act. Today is a good day in the journey to establish a commission I'd now like to invite the Honorable Rick McIver, Minister of Transportation and Interim Minister of Municipal Affairs to bring greetings on behalf of the province and to speak into the significance of today's event. Minister McIver. Uh, thanks, Councillor Broadhead. Uh, thanks everybody else for being here. And uh, yeah, I wanna say how happy I am uh, to be part of this important day. It's uh, great to be here with a bunch of municipal colleagues and members of the media uh, virtually on really what is another historic day in Alberta. It's my honor to formally uh, announce the official formation of the Edmonton Metropolitan Transit Services Commission. And while that's a mouthful, it's, uh, it's an important mouthful. As part of our red tape, uh, our government's red tape reduction commitment, we recently approved changes to the Municipal Government Act. And uh, the folks here today on the uh, new Transit Commission Board are, uh, are uh, actually making the most of that. The new commission is the first one registered as a regional, regional services commission under those amendments uh, recently to the Municipal Government Act. So congratulations and thank you. These changes uh, gave municipalities more autonomy by reducing the role the province has in approving many business decisions. The uh, commission brings the cities of Edmonton, Beaumont, Fort Saskatchewan, Leduc, Spruce Grove and St. Albert and the towns of Devon and Stony Plain under one umbrella uh, to provide integrated public transit service to residents of the metropolitan Edmonton region. Uh, a regional public transportation system, of course, is well suited to operate in the capital region area and uh, who better than uh, municipally elected people to know what's actually needed for their citizens. This commission will bring immediate cost savings, eliminate duplication of services, and most importantly, improve transit and travel options for the people of the capital region. This is a good news day for residents in the greater capital region. 
uh, regional transit commission is also an effective economic driver. It's increasingly important to have a transportation network that not only moves people quickly and efficiently, but provides critical links to get to and from work, educational institutions, and to take advantage of leisure and entertainment options in a safe, reliable network. So providing public transportation options gives people flexibility for day-to-day -day travel, both for those that don't uh, choose not to uh, drive a vehicle or don't have one, and also for those that uh, just don't, don't have a vehicle. It, it provides uh, mobility to the broad spectrum of, of, uh, of the population. So the commission will be able to leverage investments made by the capital region by Alberta's government, such as a $30 million Naki Transit Center Park and Ride in St. Albert, the recently announced 65th Avenue Interchange in Leduc, and of course the West Valley LRT line in Edmonton. It will also result in better access to the Edmonton International Airport. <coughs> and we all look forward to the day when we can come and go as we please. Uh, it's uh, it's uh, another, which is, and let's face it, the airport's a key transportation and growth hub for Alberta. Bringing eight municipalities under one umbrella is no easy task, but it demonstrates what can happen when everyone's working towards a common cause, providing safe, efficient, and cost-effective services to the taxpayers. Alberta's government was proud to support this work. A $3.7 million community partnership grant to St. Albert and Edmonton helped study the potential to create the commission without uh, presenting upfront costs to its members. The expansion of Ray Gibbons Drive in St. Albert, the QE2 65th Avenue interchange at Leduc, the opening of the Naki Transit Center in St. Albert are some examples of our of, uh, collaboration between municipalities and the Alberta government. As our communities continue to grow and municipal borders become less restrictive, it's essential that our transportation system, both public and commercial, can move people, goods and services quickly and efficiently. It's good business and uh, it's good for the quality of life for our citizens. As Minister of Municipal Affairs, I wanna congratulate and commend the work of the interim board for the, for the uh, efforts in building the vision for a regional transit service in the Edmonton metropolitan region. I know firsthand uh, how, <laughs> how trying it could be for any politicians to agree with each other on anything. So this is a uh, something really something special and something to be admired and, and congratulated today. So without without your cooperation and the cooperation of yours and other councils today just would not have happened. As Minister of Transportation, I look forward to working with you on meeting the current and future needs of transportation in the capital region and across Alberta. Good work, everybody. Thank you. Well, thank you for your inspiring words, uh, Minister McIver, and for your government's commitment and support of the establishment of the Edmonton Metropolitan Transit Services Commission. Thank you. You have supported this initiative, both financially and legislatively. And quite honestly, your words today indicate your deep understanding of the vision of regional transit for the capital region here. It's a good day. Today is, to coin a phrase, the end of the beginning of a process when eight municipalities committed to work together to collectively and collaboratively provide transit services to the region. And that this service is more efficient and effective than providing transit services individually. The journey to form the commission started years ago and the history leading up to today, in my opinion at least, is a wildly interesting testimonial to a large number of people who engaged in a common vision and exhibited the determination and perseverance to overcome the obstacles to achieve their goal. And their vision is for a future where regardless of where you live, learn, work, or play, you can experience everything all eight communities have to offer. This made possible by transportation links provided by commu uh, communities working together as a whole. In March of 2018, the Metro Mayor's Alliance Advisory Panel published a report that concluded the following, and I quote, we believe that a globally competitive Edmonton metropolitan region can be achieved, but only if municipalities act together to build the regional systems that are needed to leverage our strengths. 
Today, we have taken the first step to answer this challenge by building a regional transit commission. We find ourselves in trying times, none more so than the last year when we have all faced the physical and economic ravages of the COVID-19 pandemic. The pressure to achieve a more perfect region where municipalities work together for the benefit of all has never been more acute. The need to stretch every tax dollar to its limit to provide some measure of relief to our citizens cannot and will not be ignored. Regionally provided transit services is a working example of a mechanism to achieve this end. Now let me briefly describe the initial uh, stages of standing up the commission. The first steps will include completing the recruitment of the chief executive officer. It is absolutely critical that we engage the right individual to lead the commission. One who clearly understand that the commission as much as it is a transit authority is actually so much more. It represents the collective will of eight municipalities to work together to achieve a common goal. Its success will underpin this principle within the Edmonton metropolitan region. This work will require an individual with exemplary leadership skills, coupled with political acumen and completed with a visionary understanding of the transit industry of the future. Next, the commission itself needs to be established with all the infrastructure necessary to successfully run an organization. The commission will then do the hard work of operationalizing a plan to introduce regional services in the fall of 2022. Ladies and gentlemen, I could speak at length on the commission, but you have many voices to hear today. But before we continue with our program, and because I only have one real clear crack at the mic, I must take this opportunity to say a few thank yous to some very important people without whose efforts today would not have been possible. First to the administrative teams from each of the municipalities who actually did the work necessary to stand up this commission, thank you. It's easy for elected officials to stand up in front of the microphones and accept the credit. Today, you need to take a bow. You deserve it. Next to the team from Ernst & Young, consultants often do not receive the credit for the work they do. However, you did your industry proud by the work you did in supporting the development of this business case. While the team was large and many contributed to our success, I would be re remiss if I didn't mention the names of three, Haley Ritchie, Joss Cole, and Alan Tom. Al, your leadership, determination, and indeed your work ethic were inspiring and critical to the success of the project. When Ernst & Young was hired, I was hoping we'd get the A team. We did, thank you. To the eight mayors of the communities, the commissions will serve, thank you. Without your support today would never have come. I could tell stories of each of the mayors supporting the commission. But for today, I will only ask Mayor Iveson and Mayor Heron to remember the very first day that you met with Councillor Walters and I to kick off the commission project. Many days later, here we are. It's a good day. To my board members, there are no words to fully describe the journey that has led us to today. All I can say is that it has been an honor to serve with each of you. Today is a good day. I save my last thank you for my friend and co-conspirator on this journey of creating a regional transit commission, Edmonton Ward 10 Councillor Michael Walters. Michael, over the last seven years, I've had the privilege of working with you and coming to know you and have come to appreciate your deep love for the community you serve. Your rare intellect, your determination to succeed and your ability to see through complex issues have all been indispensable to our success. Your wisdom and steady hand have taken us through some very tough spots, but we have endured. Edmonton has benefited greatly by your service and your departure from public office will be their loss and indeed a loss felt by the entire region. But 
As he told me the other day, you're not going anywhere, at least not anytime soon. So today is a good day. Thank you, Michael. Folks, it now gives me great pleasure to introduce a short video that highlights the opportunity before us to collectively work together to achieve a stronger, more connected region. I would ask that you all mute your microphones and shut off your video cameras and watch and listen for a few moments. Regional Transit Service Commission has been approved. The RTSC will provide regional transit services in a cost-effective manner. And in the future, we'll move beyond traditional transit and provide regional mobility services within the Edmonton Metropolitan Region. Eight municipalities in the region have come together with a shared goal of improving transit and mobility across our communities. And these eight will form the core membership of the RTSC, which will serve as a key building block in the recovery of our region. An elected official from each of the eight member municipalities is serving on the board of the commission to provide direction and oversight. They are supported by a cross municipality program team who bring their knowledge and expertise to the commission. The joint application is now approved. The board will work with the CEO to stand up the commission over 2021, which will benefit the region when it comes to attracting people, jobs and investment in our communities. The old way of doing things is no longer an option. There has never been a more important time for municipalities in the region to come together and pool resources than now. While ridership numbers have not yet rebounded to pre-pandemic levels, public transit remains an essential service to countless people across our communities that rely on transit every day. The purpose and vision of the RTSC extends far beyond the end of this pandemic and plans for a future of sustainable transit services in our region. The RTSC will deliver a regional transit system that supports and enhances growth and regional connectivity in the Edmonton area. This connectivity allows for increased accessibility to regional destinations and increased opportunities for people to live, work and play. Residents, businesses and the regional economy will benefit from an efficient and integrated transit system. The concept of a regional transit system has been studied and talked about for years. Transit in our region must evolve to improve mobility, reduce congestion from automobiles, and to promote a sustainable future for transportation in our region. Regional transit must be people-centric to meet higher expectations from current and future riders. For this service to be sustainable, it must effectively encourage the use of transit as an attractive alternative to driving. The RTSC plans to roll out regional transit services in mid to late 2022 following a public consultation and transit planning process designed to meet the needs of current and future transit customers. And other communities may be interested in joining in the future and the board would be open to those discussions. Regional transit will serve as the backbone of the capital region by connecting communities and supporting a stronger, greener and more prosperous region. Transit planning and delivery will now go beyond the traditional commuter routes in and out of Edmonton. The RTSC will bring together municipal transit services that will benefit all in the region. The mission challenges us to think broader than conventional transit by allowing a variety of sustainable mobility options to best serve our region's people and communities. The vision of the RTSC is an experience where you can go any place at any time in the way that you choose. This is the future of mobility and customer service is at the heart of it. Services will be nimble and will be scaled to meet demand. From on-demand service to regional express services through high-speed bus services, customers will have a more efficient way to reach their destination. The RTSC will form strong partnerships, amplify the voice of the region and attract people and investment so we can join the ranks of other top Canadian cities. The RTSC will connect communities through a fast, convenient, simple, reliable, efficient, and affordable transit service that seamlessly integrates with other modes of transportation. Well, to the technical team that put that uh, video together, thank you so much. 
it was uh, it was truly a good video. Ladies and gentlemen, if you could re-engage your video cameras and for my board colleagues to engage their microphones at the appropriate time. It's now my pleasure to introduce my friend and vice chair of the Edmonton Metropolitan Transit Services Commission, Board 10 Councillor Michael Walters. Over to you, sir. Thank you, Wes. And uh, all those kind things you said to me, I could say back to you and then some. So it's been a pleasure working with you and, and with all of uh, my other board colleagues on this initiative. This is, this is indeed a great day. Uh, and it's great because this new commission represents a new entity that will be responsible for delivering regional transit and mobility services for the eight member municipalities and hopefully more in the future. Well, ETS will continue to be a standalone entity uh, delivering local transit for several more years. The city of Edmonton is extremely proud to be part of this commission as we drive towards a fully integrated regional transit net network in the next few years. In the short term, we will be shifting up to 10% of our service into this new commission. In the coming months, the detailed work begins and the commission will formalize a business strategy, structure, and a culture to position the organization to succeed in fulfilling this mandate. A key part of this immediate work will include a workforce and labor strategy, including how and when hiring will begin for the new entity, and that this be done in consultation with each current municipality and their, trans and their local transit agencies. The commission needs to build a strong team that demonstrates the skills and the expertise and the passion that, is, that are the foundation of a well-run and well-integrated transit system across our region. Uh, with that, it is now my pleasure to introduce Councillor Sam Munkoff-Swain from the beautiful city of Beaumont. Thank you, Michael. Uh, it's great to be here on this exciting day for Beaumont and the region. So what does this mean for Beaumont? It means that we have a seat at the table in terms of planning the future of mobility for the region and better integrates Beaumont into the regional economy. It provides our residents with longer hours of service, more frequent buses, and access to additional routes to travel within the region. In short, being part of this regional commission provides better service at a lower cost to our taxpayers. So how's the commission gonna be structured in the earlier stages? So a tremendous amount of work has been done to date, working with transit professionals across the region, building a comprehensive customer focused service delivery model. This approach will guide how our new organization delivers our, its core services, meets the needs of customers and engages with municipalities in pursuit of the organization's mandate and vision. It would also guide our municipalities through the transition period to minimize disruption to our customers and make it seamless for workers so that municipalities can realize all the benefits of pooling our resources. In summary, we're moving to a regional transit model to provide a common and improved transit experience for people who rely on it and also benefit everyone in the region. I'd now like to pass it over to my friend and regional neighbor, Councillor Glenn Finstead from the beautiful city of Leduc. Well, thank you. Thank you, beautiful Beaumont and Councillor Monkoff Swain for the warm introduction to Leduc, the crossroads of air, highways, and rail. For Leduc, we look forward to enhancing the economic benefits to the region and better connect people in Leduc to business and employment opportunities. The Leduc Council and transit professionals have been instrumental in developing the commission and ensuring Leduc residents are well served. Extensive work has been completed to build a framework and a commission that will be able to deliver on its critical mandate. To this end, the board is looking forward to adopting bylaws that will facilitate effective and timely decision making. Our bylaws are built on the principle of regional collaboration, respect the interests of all member municipalities, and enshrines an equitable decision-making model. It's now my pleasure to introduce and welcome Councillor McKenzie from the vibrant, dynamic city of Spruce Grove. Chantel. Yes, thank you, Councillor Finstad. Um, first, I'd, I'd just really like to say that I'm so proud to be part of this commission uh, representing the city of Spruce Grove. Spruce Grove has had a long history of collaborating with our municipal neighbors on delivering integrated services to the region. And we are excited to see the spirit of partnership being extended even further. 
Uh, for some examples, you know, we have partnered with the City of Edmonton on commuter operations and fleet maintenance. We have developed a tri-municipal regional transit plan and implemented cost-sharing measures with Stony Plain and Parkland County. We have also partnered with Edmonton, St. Albert, Fort Saskatchewan, Leduc and Beaumont on the UPASS and Smart Fare initiatives. With today's announcement, we look, for, we look to further that collaborative approach by connecting Spruce Grove residents and businesses with even more services and destinations. I am a firm believer that reliable transportation generates positive economic and social impacts for communities. I think I speak for all of my colleagues today when, the, when I say that the formation of this commission will only increase those impacts. This will be achieved uh, through active partnerships between all eight municipalities. And we will continue to work with all of our stakeholders in the region to serve the residents and the businesses. Today's celebration of the legal formation of this commission is the next step towards realizing our vision of a collaborative, connected regional transit service. This group is dedicated to serving our residents. This group is dedicated to collaboration and teamwork. And once again, this is a group that I am so proud to be part of. So thank you for that opportunity. And I'd now like to introduce Councillor Harris from the fabulous Fort Saskatchewan. Thank you very much for that kind introduction, Councillor McKenzie. Uh, Fort Saskatchewan is seeking to improve transit service and ensure it is delivered in a more cost-effective way. For Fort Saskatchewan and our region to be more economically competitive and an attractive home for business, it is critical that we are part of an integrated regional transit network and economy. Fort Saskatchewan's participation in a regional transit commission demonstrates its willingness to explore any and every opportunity for regional collaboration that will benefit our city. We have worked extensively to build a business case and a sound financial plan to support regional transit. Critical work has begun to prepare the organization to operate in a way that is fiscally prudent and sound, such that member municipalities realize the projected savings. It is now my pleasure to introduce Mayor Ray Ralph of the town of Devon. Mayor Ralph. Thank you, Councillor Harris and to Fort Saskatchewan for joining us in the commission to bring new transit options to the Edmonton metropolitan region. Transit is especially important to us in Devon. We have been working hard on bringing transit to our community for many years and to provide this level of service to our residents. I would also like to thank Councillor Tanya Hugh for her participation and involvement uh, up to date uh, to get us where we are today. Being part of the commission gives us the opportunity to work with our regional partners to bring reliable, consistent and affordable public transit to our town. This regional commission also allows for transit services to be innovative and tailored to the meet, meet the town of Devon's needs. With Devon being part of the regional transit network, the town will be better connected to employment and education options and to key destinations like the Edmonton International Airport and our neighboring communities. Transit has been reinforced as an essential service during the COVID-19 pandemic and will be critical piece to our economic recovery. The commission will not only provide conventional transit services, but is charged to embrace new technology and mobile options to bring a new level of service to, to transit for all users. I will now, like to now pass this over to my friend, Councillor Lori from the town of Stony Plain to share his remarks. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor Ralph. Developing local transit has been a priority for Stony Plain over the last several years. This spring, we will be launching our own new public transit service. And as we move to the future, the commission will play a key role in expanding our rider base and providing better connection into our neighboring municipalities. Stony Plain is no stranger to working alongside regional partners. And by working together, we can improve the quality of life and establish our region as an attractive destination for residents, businesses and future investment. For Stony Plain and the Edmonton Metropolitan Region to be competitive, we must develop a regional mindset and this strong regional approach needs to apply to the way we plan our region, attract businesses and deliver transit. For regional collaboration to be effective, it requires true partnerships and consultation. For this endeavor to be successful, the Commission will be transparent 
engage with the public, and respect the viewpoints of all its member municipalities. Public participation is a key factor in the heart of Stony Plains community development and decision making process. It allows us to make better decisions, ensure processes are equitable, to be inclusive, to clearly define roles and responsibilities, to be transparent and accountable, and to be proactive. We will continue to engage our community and develop public transit services that are accessible and meet the needs of all of our residents. Following a public consultation and transit planning process designed to meet the needs of the current and future transit customers, the Commission is excited to plan for a rollout of our regional transit service in mid to late 2022. With that, I would like to turn it back over to our moderator. Thank you very much, Deputy Mayor Laurie, and thank you to all of our speakers.